Hello, fellow Voyagers. Jess here with Odyssey Human, here today to talk about the five secrets of advanced manifestors so that you can swipe them. Welcome to the channel. This is the place where we help you hack through the jungles of consciousness so that you can discover the hidden treasures inside of you. My friends, it's all there ready and waiting to be activated by you. Please subscribe. That sounds good to you. We'd love to have you join the channel. So today's five secrets of advanced manifestors are to help you deepen your experience on your journey to already being an advanced manifestor or to considering yourself an advanced manifestor. And these are from my perception, my perspective. So let's go ahead and jump in. <laughs> so number one, advanced manifestors see everything through the lens of imagination. When I, early in my journey, was watching a lot of content, right, in that kind of sponge mode where you have a lot of cre different creators that you're trying to absorb and coaches advice that you're trying to absorb and you're trying to weave it all together into this kind of cohesive theory. Um, do that. <laughs> Advanced manifestors have developed a theory. The theory that I've come up with is everything is imagination. Everything is imagination. And it's not the techniques that we're doing right. It's our dedication to what we believe, what we accept, and what we conjure in our imagination. And that's the benchmark, right? That theory. If you're an advanced manifester, you'll find that you have developed a really solid theory that you've kind of already tested and proven to yourself. Uh, for me, it is everything is imagination. That is my theory. And you've let go, you've adjusted your worldview from what it was before you really started reality creation. Um, and you have stepped away from that into this really solid belief system now that you've developed. It also helps if you still are someone who watches a lot of different um, content creators to get tips, to get understanding, to get knowledge on this subject. If you filter it through the lens of everything is imagination, it's going to make a lot of sense because, and I, I believe that's what brings cohesiveness to all these different philosophies. All these different philosophies is seeing it through the filter that everything is imagination. Because some of the things that coaches say don't fit classical worldviews. It just doesn't make sense. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, and so, but when you replace what they're saying, when you filter it through knowing that they're just speaking about imagination as a concept, I found it made a lot more sense. Everything became a lot more cohesive and it helped me build that, my own belief system that facilitates reality creation in an easier an easier way. So, all right, number two, what is the number two secret of an advanced manifester? They have divorced the idea of separation. Separation creates a lot of headache, heartache, disappointment, sadness, negative emotion, right? In our existence, when we bring separation into existence, when we make it real with our belief in it, we are setting ourselves up for that disconnect, right? The disconnect of then um, something else having power outside of ourselves. And when we experience negative emotion, that is a cue that we've fallen asleep into that belief again, right? When we get upset at something, we're recognizing, oh wait, okay, I'm making separation real. I am forgetting I've fallen asleep and forgotten that there is no separation. And so advanced manifestors have really leaned into divorcing this idea and doing it less and less as a habit. And um, I like to think about it like a nighttime dream. You know, when I wake up from a dream, the idea of separation exists in the dream, right? We, we experience the emotions of a nighttime dream. We wake up from it and we're like, whoa, I was so in that. I so believed it was real. I was participating fully. I was acting it out as the dreamer. 
But really when we wake up, we recognize that, wow, that was all through my consciousness. That entire experience I just had that I felt was so real, where there was this artificial sense of separation was really through my consciousness. This whole experience came through me, right? Through my awareness, through my perception. And so that's how I like to start that's how I started a while ago thinking about my normal waking reality. Just like a nighttime dream. It's that same property of awareness at different levels. I heard David Wilcock once. Um, he used to have a series called Wisdom Teachings. He said one of the most profound things that I've ever heard in my life. That reality, what we create, what we consider reality is actually... Um, a series of kind of like nesting Russian dolls <laughs> where it's just like fractaled, fractalized consciousness. And he showed like a picture of different fractals where when you kind of travel through it and a small fractal becomes a bigger fractal and it just, it was like this telescoping um, levels of reality and this is what I consider to be consciousness now is that whether I'm in a nighttime dream or I am in what, what we would call waking reality or I'm in my imagination, right? These are all um, kind of these different layers of imagination that we're passing through and it kind of eliminates that sense of separation where we travel, you know, our perspective travels through these kind of very kaleidoscopic um, areas of consciousness that either become bigger or smaller, depending on what we believe, what we believe, right? When we're in a nighttime dream, we're totally convinced that that is what is happening to us in reality. Then we wake up and it becomes smaller. I believe this is what happens when we pass when we die is that we wake up from this waking reality that we're experiencing and it becomes smaller and then our our essence our awareness um goes into another adventure <laughs> right we 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 play with scale right we play with scale of this fractal reality that is all consciousness and it's just different levels, layers, locations, however you want to conceptualize that. But really the idea is there's no separation, right? The bigger <laughs> point I'm trying to make here is there's no separation to it. It's like this, it's this continuous experience that just changes based on where you are. It shifts and adjusts, it becomes bigger and smaller. Um, and it's just different places of perception. So that was a very elaborate answer for number two, but number two is they've divorced the idea of separation. So divorcing that idea and recognizing that when you're in a negative emotion, a negative state, you're feeling disconnected, it's because we are looking from a point of view where separation is real we can also look from a point of view where it is not real. And that begins to blur the lines. That really begins, <clears throat> again, to bring you into a more cohesive place of not feeling so constricted and confined by these classical rules that you were taught as a child, these classical um, you know, boundaries and structures that seemed so solid. They begin to kind of melt and become more malleable. Advanced manifestors know this and play with this. Uh, number three, number three secret, they tune out society. They, they totally tune out pop, pop culture, society. They have long ago stepped away from the group think of society. Um, <clears throat> because often, you know, the group think of society is very structured. It's very predictable. It's very realistic. And in order to be an advanced manifester and live outside the box, think outside the box, be outside the box, you got to drop that. 
you really do. <laughs> They've done that. So uh, number four, that includes others' opinions. So in you know society, what we perceive as society, we have generated in our own mind, right? Because everything is imagination. When you think about this, what we think society thinks, we have created. So that is a thought, a belief that advanced manifestors have dropped, that you can drop. And that includes on a smaller scale, if we go down to that scale thing, the fractal analogy, number four is it also includes other people's opinions. Advanced manifestors see all other data, see conversations with others, see their relationships as um, purely opinion, purely opinion. Even the facts are someone's opinion. They were a scientist's opinion, and that scientist was paid by, you know, got a grant, and they can only study things in a certain range to qualify for that grant. They're looking for specific outcomes, you know. So really starting to see others' opinions, like the people who are in your life, and I know that we want to be accepted by our tribe. Like, of course, we want to be accepted by our tribe and our friends and our family. But really, advanced manifestors have taken that step back to develop a personal solidarity and come up with their own theories and methods. And they don't really share it anymore. That's what I've found for myself. I don't really share kind of you know, my deeper intentions, my deeper goals, my deeper imaginings and outcomes, I don't share them with people. You know, earlier I used to think, oh, if I speak them out loud, makes them come to pass more easily, but really I don't do that anymore because, um, again, the, the amount, our perception of other people's opinions is our, our, our own, right? It's our imagination that we have used to project someone else's opinion and then we let it influence us. So we don't have to do that anymore. We've dropped, you know, number four, drop that, drop that. I once started taking a PhD program and I recognized that <laughs> the textbook, as I was starting to read the first chapter of the textbook, I realized this is just this dude's opinion. This is just this one guy's opinion. And I had a really hard time integrating it into my own. And I stopped, I actually stopped. Um, I asked for a refund <laughs> and I was like, I, this isn't jiving with me. Cause I, I recognized that the traditional structures of education were just other people's opinions. And so as an advanced manifester, you start to recognize areas of your own awareness and imagination and consciousness where you have artificially created the opinions of others and you have let them influence you. And you've stopped doing that, both on a small scale level of the people around you physically and the larger scale level of number three of society, right? You've kind of shut you shut your ears to that. And the last thing, the last secret of an advanced manifester is they've trained their attention. Training our attention means having pure thoughts, right? Having pure thoughts. When we put a pure thought out, we have hit the mark of embodying it, believing it, bringing it about, right? Our experience is that. There is no doubt. There is no wavering when you have a pure thought. You can also call it stubbornness. I approached this in developing this skill through stubbornness, just being totally stubborn about this is what is happening. This is what is happening in my experience. This is what I believe. This is how it is. You can also call it consistency. You can call it perseverance, but it's being defiant about what you don't want. Advanced manifestors are very good about being defiant about what they don't want. They're like, okay, I see that, but my experience, my lived experience is gonna be this, what I have created and chosen in imagination. 
And it's just a habit of practicing pure thought versus practicing doubt and inconsistency, right? It's part of the personal sovereignty that an advanced manifester does, right? All five of these is about developing that inner authority, that personal sovereignty to shut out any outside influences, perceived outside influences, get very clear and focused on what we want and then anchoring what we want through imagination, through the foundation of a consistent worldview of that has been practiced and tested. That's it. That, that, those are the real secrets of an advanced manifester. And number five, you know, this practicing Practicing pure thought over doubt is just a habit change, right? When you find yourself in states of doubt, get back on the track of that pure thought of like, no, this is how it is. Practice stubbornness. That's how I came at it, the concept of stubbornness. I know this was helpful to you. Drop a comment below. I'm happy to engage with you on these five secrets of advanced manifestors. And if you need a tool to help you practice peace of mind, go ahead and grab it in the description box below. It is always free for you. It is a habit change practice that will help you get on track today and stay on track. It's what helped me um, totally transform my mind. So go ahead and grab that. And thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.